Hey there, you caught me playing Kitchen Against My Green Screen. I'm always kind of in the mood for cooking whenever I open up the Ren Pai cookbook, because there's always so many like neat recipes. Usually it's just stuff like, hey, here's a continue button, or this is an easier way to write this complicated thing. But sometimes you find something really unique and something so good you want to try it out at home. And when I went to the Ren Pai cookbook and I saw Watson's Kinetic Text Asset Pack, oh my god, I wanted to play with it so bad. I mean, look at this stuff. I'll be linking this in the description, so please be sure to check it out and give Watson some love and, and money. So let's take a peek inside and get cooking. So when you download the zip file, don't worry about any of this other stuff. Just grab the game folder and drop it in the RenPy folder. That way you can open this script.rpyc file just like any other RenPy game. When you open up the game, let's go ahead and just see how this text appears on the screen. And if we look right in the game files, we can see that that's just activated by putting in ATL equals bounce. And the next one looks like it's going to be rotating the text along with that bounce. So there we go. The next step is just rotating text on its own. Now I've messed around with this a little bit. The ATL refers to how much each of the letters is going to kind of differ from each other in the rotation. And then past this little tilde there, the 1.0 just designates how many seconds it's going to take for each of these letters to make a full rotation. So for instance, we turned up the ATL to, I don't know, 10.0 and the rotate text to, I don't know, let's say 20 seconds. You'll see the letters are rotating very slowly and each one is rotated way more than the one previously. And then on the other side of things, if we set the ATL to 0.0, .0 and the rotate text to 0.75, you'll notice that the text is all pretty much rotating together here. The same speed, the same time, it's taken 0.75 seconds to do a full rotation. It looks like most of these kinetic text functions are going to be using the same sort of naming conventions, so we're just going to keep that in mind as we go on. Next up is the dripping text. And that's its own special function called drop text here. You'll notice that if we remove the bounce text, for instance, the text is just going to drip without that bounce. And next are some 3D rotation text elements. You'll notice in the code that these are using the camera perspective to turn it on just on that one specific layer. So these do require that perspective is set for true, but you can do it just for that one particular layer. So next up are some easy ones. We have a simple fade in, ATL fade in text. There's the exploding text, which that's just applied with the standard explode. I also wrote a special line so you can see that you can adjust the length of the explosion so you can make it in half a second or you can have it wait until three seconds. There's also a function called explode half that lets you explode things kind of in a positional direction like this. But again, you can adjust those values here. So I changed the direction with this first number here and how long it took to make the explosion happen on the right. So there it explodes in the opposite direction. Next up is glitch text. They originally had it set for something like 2.0, but I turned it up so you could really kind of see the effect there. And it's really strong. This is a cool one. Now, all those functions we just went over were additions that Watson put in version like 2.0 and 3.0. The next section we're going to be going over is the original version of this, which I, I saw probably about a year ago, and I was really fascinated by it. And you'll notice the implementation is a lot different. It's a lot closer to how you would define like bolds and italics. So this might not work for in the future, but for now, it's really useful code to have. So next up is the wavy bouncy text, and you can see that's applied with a simple BT equals 10. And by changing the number up from 10 to 50, you can see that increases how far the text moves around and you know, consequently how fast it goes. Next up is the scared shaky text. Now this is a little bit harder to spot. It's really just that SC thing. Everything else here is some other customized font. The shaky text can also be turned up a little bit more. So here you can see it's set for 10 and that's pretty shaky. And then that's a three right there from the I'm adjust to set to one it calmed down and then turned off for the now. So you can see that range there. Next is spinning rotation, just like a less good version of the ATL rotate, which you can see you have a lot less control over than you had with the ATL equals rotate. Next are just some simple gradient effects you can apply with text. And that's just done by using gradient equals. And then you can set a range of values that you want colors to blend between over time. Okay, and this next one's going to be really neat. Movable sliding text looks pretty normal until you move your mouse close to it. And then you're going to notice that the text is going to move around in response to it. That's done with just a simple move tag here. So it's pretty easy to implement. Now the next part's actually a very nice thing for Watson to include just 
acknowledging bugs that exist in this space. If the text goes longer than the text box, usually the text is just going to wrap back around. But using some of these functions, it's not going to operate exactly the same. So in that case, you're going to want to use the paragraph tag into the line to be able to make the text displayable in a new paragraph to avoid the issue. But kind of the joy of the RenPy cookbook is, yes, some of these things can be a little bit buggy at times, but there's just some really interesting stuff that you can take and you can kind of build on. And the next two I really want to point out are things that you can really make something out of. So you'll notice here the text swaps between Eileen and Liney and love and hate. That's just with the application of the swap tag here, which you can see how easily you can swap between different types of text. So here it's swap equals love, hate, separated by an at symbol. And the 1.0 just designates how long it takes between the swap. This is also applied to the character above. You can see the character set is swap equals Eileen and Liney at the 1.0. So you can really put this text treatment anywhere. Now this one's really interesting. So the chaos text is set up with just a simple in brackets chaos. And I like it. It just, it's a little too noisy to be functional. Like it looks really interesting. It's a really neat effect, but it's pretty much illegible. Like the colors are one thing, varying text sizes, all the different fonts. That's another thing on their own. Each one of those are kind of legible, but when you put them all together, it's that's really hard to read. And I feel like there's something there. We just need to tweak a little bit. So let's go into the RPY files where they made this thing and let's see if we can make any adjustments on our own. So on the side here, you can see there's a whole bunch of RPY files that are associated with certain text tags. The kinetic text tags is going to have the majority of the files there. So here we're going to go in, we're going to check out the chaos text. And as you can imagine, it's a little hard to parse. Here's a definition of the chaos tag that seems to apply a style called chaos text, which here we can see it's a class all its own. And this is where we can kind of start to figure this out. So here you can see it's defined as a class. Watson has been kind enough to add a lot of comments to kind of let us know what's going on. So here we can see it's drawing from a list of a whole bunch of different fonts. Here we have a whole bunch of color choices picked out for hex values. And we can see that the random sizes are applied over here. So let's go ahead and make our own version of it. We're just going to copy and paste this entire class, paste it and rename it. We're going to start cutting some stuff out. So here you can see I removed everything other than the turret road fonts. So it's still the same font family, but it's a whole bunch of different variations of all of them. I commented out the color choice here because I really don't want to change the colors all that much. Removed a whole bunch of color stuff here too. And I reduced the range of the random size of the text here. And we'll do the same thing with the chaos tag. So again, control C and we'll paste it there. And we're just changing a couple of the names there. And then at the very bottom, adding it as our own custom text tag. Now I only half know what's going on in there. A lot of it's new to me. A lot of it's probably new to you, but that's okay because we know that it works. So if we want to make any adjustments to it, it's just a matter of taking little sections of it and just tweaking it and slowly iterating. Once something breaks, we can go ahead and take a step back, see what we did, kind of work from there. But we have a base that we can build on here. It's just like taking a fun recipe from a recipe book and going like, yeah, hey, let's add some cinnamon or like a little bit more oregano. Just, just tweak it until you have it to a place where you like it. So now that we've skipped past all the trial and error and we have a working version of Light Chaos, let's see how it looks. And there we go. Like, it's definitely chaotic looking. It definitely has like a lot of variation to it, but it's actually legible. So this might be something I actually use for an upcoming game. And tweaking stuff sometimes just means using these things in a context that the original creator never intended. In the game Ghost Switch by Katie 133 she decided to just throw images in there inside of the text box. And you can see it works just as well. I mean, just look at how great that looks. So again, I included a link to Watson's kinetic text tool in the description below. Be sure to play around with it yourself. Like, you know, really get your hands in there. Have you seen any really interesting RenPy tools lately or maybe even something you made yourself? Be sure to leave a comment below and take a look at it because God knows I love to cook. Like metaphorically, the bull's empty. The bull's a metaphor for programming.